From artist board to newsprint page, comics in the era of metal printing, from the 1910s to the 1980s. In the days of printing newspapers from raised metal plates, long before photostats and digital scanners, how did a cartoon make its way from an artist's drawing board into hundreds or thousands of newspapers around the United States and around the world? It took eight steps. Let's look at this process through historical footage and photos of preserved artifacts that cover an era of raised metal printing of newspapers from about the 1910s to as late as the 1980s. First, the cartoonist draws their work on a medium, like Bristol board, at a larger size than will appear in print. Now, a photographic negative is made for the next production steps, also reducing it to its final printed size. One or more negatives is firmly contacted to a sheet of zinc metal already coated with a photosensitive substance. The negative and zinc plate are placed in a glass frame and exposed to extremely bright light. The portions of the coating, as small as tiny dots, exposed through transparent parts of the negative, harden under this intense light. The exposed zinc plate is run through an etching bath of acid, which eats away the unexposed portions, leaving raised metal. The plate is scrubbed clean and routed, lowering the height of large unexposed areas and cutting away unnecessary portions of the zinc plate. This results in a finished zinc plate like this one, a Wizard of Id strip from April 27, 1966. A comics syndicate is an organization that contracts with cartoonists to distribute their work to newspapers. They date back to the 1910s and still thrive today. One of a syndicate's chief jobs is to produce duplicates of a cartoon that a newspaper can reproduce. In the metal printing era, a syndicate would take the zinc plate from the previous step and create a mold using flong, a material like a soft cardboard made primarily of wood pulp and which is slightly dampened before use. Under high pressure, the flong is formed. Thousands of identical flongs may be made from a single zinc plate. A finished flong made by a syndicate looks like this example, the black printing plate for a Peanuts Color Sunday comic from November 27, 1977. Syndicates package flongs for one or more weeks of a cartoon or the Color Sunday installment and send them out to subscribing newspapers. The flongs arrive at the newspaper office, where they are examined and sent to the printing plant. In the plant, flongs are cut down as necessary for individual strips or separate plates for color pages. They are then cast in a hard alloy of lead, tin, and antimony, typically in a small casting frame like the one shown. This cast plate is called a stereotype or stereo. Examples shown here of preserved stereotype comics plates include Doonesbury, Blondie, and Joe Palooka. For any page in the newspaper, page makeup staff build a full page of headlines, body type, illustrations, and photographs. No surviving images or film exists of a laid out metal comics page. Shown here is a typical news page layout. Once the page is approved, it is passed on to the flong or matrix makers who create a mold of the entire newspaper page. The flong is made, as with individual cartoons, by compressing the raw material against the raised metal original through a large, high-pressure flong press. Few full newspaper comics page flongs survive. This partly damaged flong, shown here, is from the Seattle Post-Intelligencer, May 9, 1935. And this portion of a page of comics flong is from the San Francisco Examiner on September 19, 1927, and held in the San Francisco Academy of Comic Art Collection at the Billy Ireland Cartoon Library and Museum. The flong maker removes the finished item and passes it to the stereotype department, which bends the flong and places it into a half-circle or hemispherical plate caster. The stereotype maker releases a molten lead alloy into the mold. This alloy hardens almost instantly. The resulting plate weighs about 40 pounds or 18 kilograms. The caster produces a plate like this one, a damaged comic stereotype from an unidentified newspaper from July 17, 1976. 
A stereotype worker removes the plate, trims and cleans it, paints it with a page number, and sends it to the press room on a conveyor belt or other track. A press operator receives the plate, hoists it onto the press, and locks it into place. The operator starts the press running at low speed to ensure everything is working correctly and then engages the full press speed rate. Finally, the comics page arrives in the hands of readers. With the large-scale end of raised metal newspaper printing by the 1980s, comic syndication became largely photographic, with cartoons shipped out to newspapers on flat sheets, a simpler but still multi-stage process, shown here has color separations for the comic strip for better or for worse, from the Mark J. Cohen and Rose Marie McDaniel collection at Billy Ireland. Just a few years after that, syndicates and newspapers switched to digital files, with just a single reproduction step from artist to newsprint. Flongs and stereotypes are gone, but not entirely forgotten. This video was written, produced, and the voiceover provided by Glenn Fleischman, an independent printing historian in Seattle, Washington. The work is distributed under the Creative Commons by NCND 4.0 International License.